promiscuous. And to members of the public, <laughs> uh, to members of the public who are here this evening, we're not expecting any fire alarms to go off. So if by any chance the alarms do go, will you please make your way out um, of the door at the back of the room, please, and members out of the door here. Um, also, to anybody who hasn't been here before, uh, the officers will introduce every item. Um, if we have speakers, which we do have to all three of the uh, main items on the agenda tonight, um, they will be invited to speak for th up to three minutes. <coughs> it's a strict three minutes. Um, and then we will, I will ask members if they have any points of clarification. And if not, uh, we will then move to the debate. So with that in mind, um, I'll start the agenda. Howard, have we got any apologies? And can I remember remind members about declarations of interest? Um, and item number three, we have no items that the press has to be and the public have to be um, withdrawn from. Um, so item number four is the planning application for Pinhoe Quarry, and this is a reserved matters. The outline has already been agreed, so the roads and things have already been agreed on this one, so it is the detail we're discussing tonight. And I believe, Matt, you're doing it. Thank you, Chair. Good evening, members. This first application before you this evening is a reserved matters application for details of appearance, landscaping, layout and scale relating to the residential development comprising 380 dwellings, flexible retail and community space, and the associated infrastructure, garage and parking, landscaping, open space, equipped children's play and public realm. This is pursuant to planning permission reference 10 slash 2088, which was granted on the 6th of February 2012. Just before we go through the slides, members, there's a couple of late uh, issues to report. Members will see from the additional information sheet that the, uh, the applicant had been in discussions with Devon County Council's uh, local fl uh, flooding team regarding uh, various technical details relating to the surface water drainage strategy. Um, this afternoon, we've received a further correspondence from Devon County Council's flooding team. Um, they have an issue with the submitted drainage plans under this application in that they consider the pipework proposed is effectively too uh, small to deal with the uh, one in 100 year uh, flood risk event. Uh, it has been designed to the one in 30 year event. Now, there is um, a condition on the outline permission that requires details of sewers and drainage. Um, because this application has a reserve matters uh, to deal with the issues of layout, appearance, landscaping and scale, um, doesn't uh, deal with that particular matter, uh, we consider that uh, the application can proceed this evening with a recommendation for approval except without approving the drainage plans as they will have to be dealt with under a separate application to deal with the condition on the outline consent. Bed, two bed and three bed and four bed um, dwellings on the site. Over on the west is a what's described as a boulevard which will have some taller dwellings facing onto it. Generally at the corners, uh, at these key nodal points here and here, you have some uh, higher uh, uh, buildings to help with legibility and place making. To the north of the site is a uh, leap, uh, which is linked to another leap, so that, that's a play area, via green corridor through the middle of the site here. Generally speaking, the application is higher density to the west, crash <coughs> becomes lower density in the northeastern part of the site. What um, the applicants have also proposed is a shared pedestrian cycle path that runs around the base 
of the slope around the perimeter of the scheme, which provides a, a recreational uh, um, and leisure uh, route. And this links via a path on this side to another um, public right-of-way route that is in existence and goes around the top of the slope. An additional feature is a, a sub scheme here, which will have a uh, waterfall feature collecting into a pond feature at the base of the slope in here, and that will link into a, a drainage swale that will go around the perimeter of the scheme as part of the uh, SUDS proposals and also as a, as a key feature of the scheme in terms of placemaking uh, and enhanced ecology. This diagram shows the uh, actual scale of the building in terms of heights. So as I say, the taller buildings facing onto the wider boulevard over to the west, generally two stories. <coughs> in the centre part of the scheme, again some taller buildings facing onto this attenuation pond giving some emphasis to that area. This is the proposed street hierarchy, so your primary routes through the scheme are shown in bold, here and here, linking to this area to the north east. <coughs> Uh, and obviously you can see there's a, a network of footpaths uh, to enhance uh, permeability for walking around the sides, around the edges and through the green corridor here. This diagram shows the proposed parking scheme. It's a, a mix of on-plot uh, integrated garages, a bit of on-street parking uh, and quite a bit of courtyard parking as well. This plan shows the uh, affordable housing distribution in the scheme uh, in accordance with the, the outline consent. As you know, we like affordable housing to be uh, pepper-potted in clusters uh, in residential developments, which is what's been achieved here, generally on this area, over here in some of the apartment blocks as well. So it's a mix of shared ownership and social rented housing. This uh, diagram just highlights the proposed landscaping um, stroke ecology proposals. Obviously there's a very strong green corridor around the edge of the site on, on the slope. There is quite a lot of existing trees that will clearly be protected uh, as well as quite a lot of new tree planting um, proposed as part of the uh, new development, uh, mainly comprising street trees um, with a, a strong focus on the boulevard. Uh, these images give uh, members an impression of the appearance of the development, so uh, there is a fairly uh, simple uh, yet high quality contemporary uh, style to the scheme. This image shows the proposed townhouses, which have a uh, good <coughs> vertical emphasis, a good uh, mix of uh, materials. And these images show some of the other proposed dwellings that are mixed within the scheme. And this is how some of the street scenes knit together. So this shows the street scene on the boulevard with the townhouses providing good vertical emphasis with the larger apartment blocks on the corners which is obviously good for legibility and these are examples of some of the other street elevations proposed um, I've not copied all the floor plans obviously it's a very large application with a, a high number of different types of dwellings but this is an example of the one of the apartment blocks and this is actually the one showing the proposed community units on the ground floor down here. Uh, and in accordance with the outline consent uh, legal agreement, obviously we as a council, as you know, require an element of um, 
uh, wheelchair accessible dwellings, which we prefer in the form of bungalows um, as part of larger residential schemes. So this is the floor plan of uh, the proposed bungalow unit, of which there are three proposed in the scheme. <coughs> These final images are um, effectively illustrations of uh, giving an idea of what the, the final character of the development will look like. Uh, and this sketch shows the proposed boulevard. Uh, this applic application has gone to the design review panel, uh, which had a, a favourable uh, um, report. We as officers consider that the application uh, is um, high quality and is recommended for approval with um, seven conditions, albeit, uh, as already mentioned, um, we would like to add a further condition dealing with uh, boundary treatments as requested by uh, the applicants. Thank you very much. Thank you, Matt. Do members have any matters of clarification before I ask uh, the speaker? Councillor Harvey. Thank you. Um, can you clarify for me how the attenuation ponds and so on are going to be fenced against um, children <coughs> tripping, falling into them, etc.? It didn't appear there was any fencing on the um, pictures I've seen. Uh, that will be picked up by the uh, the condition for boundary treatments that I discussed. So if members are obviously concerned about that issue, which I know has been brought up in regard to other applications, um, we can make sure that that, uh, that is provided for um, via a planning condition. Thank you. If there are another, another point of clarification, I'd like to ask um, our speaker, uh, Mr. Russell Smith, if he would like to come to the table, please. Um, if you press the knob on the right of the um, microphone, when you're comfortable, um, you have three minutes to state your case. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, my name is Russell Smith. Uh, I'm from Walsingham Planning uh, and I'm the planning agent for this application at Pinho Quarry, speaking on behalf of the applicants, uh, a joint venture between Gallifrey Tribe Partnerships, Nat Trading is a mystery, and, uh, and Live West. Um, full planning permission for the reprofiling of the quarry to provide a development platform and for access to proposed residential development together with outline permission for the 380 dwellings, uh, new homes was granted by Exeter City Council in 2012. Mm -hmm. Following the completion of the reprofiling works, the Reserve Matters application before you this evening now addresses in detail that residential development and the matters of uh, layout, scale, appearance and landscape. Um, the development is a joint venture between Gallifrey Tri Partnerships, now trading as Fishery Partnerships, and the Housing Association Live West. Um, we've been working closely with your officers for over 12 months to develop the detailed proposals that you see before you. Um, throughout these discussions, the key driver has been uh, the creation, uh, the delivery of a distinctive and attractive development uh, that maximises the delivery of high quality affordable homes. Um, it is the applicant's intention to increase the level of affordable housing um, that will be delivered over and above that set out in the Section 106 agreement that is currently in place. Um, we feel that the proposals have benefited from a, a positive dialogue with your officers uh, and members will also recall uh, we presented the proposals as they have developed at two separate members working groups. Um, we've also engaged and received positive feedback from the design review panel who noted that they felt the scheme clearly demonstrated the design proposal have logically evolved from a clear understanding of the site and considered that the approach is of a high standard in terms of design. Um, the officers report that you have before you and, uh, and the presentation um, by Matt have just set, uh, has set out the key details of the reserve matters application and the uh, planning application and the relevant considerations. Um, I do not intend to take up members' time by going back over those details and considerations. However, I'm available, along with uh, representatives of the applicants, uh, here tonight to answer any questions that members may have. Um, and just on that point, on the clarification in relation to the attenuation basins uh, and health and safety, part of the design principles have been to ensure that the grading of those attenuation slopes will be such that 
if someone were to get into the into the basin, they would be able to get out. They have been uh, graded with shallow, shallow, shallow uh, sides so that the, there isn't a steep drop off, and people will always be able to get out should uh, should someone find themselves in there. Thank you. Thank you. Um, are you happy to take questions? Any members got any questions of Miss Dora Smith, Councillor Harvey? <coughs> yes. Can you tell me how car parking will be addressed around the shop premises in particular? Because I'm concerned about people um, not having appropriate car parking space there, coming home and suddenly realising they haven't got a loaf of bread or a bottle of milk, and abandoning their car there and causing. Um, difficulties <coughs> along both Harrington Lane and within the site itself. The um, there is on there is on street car parking within the development itself. There isn't the opportunity to provide further parking on Harrington Lane associated with with the retail, but it would be uh, for for uh, uh, within the boulevard and the development itself. The on street parking uh, uh, is there. Councillor Sutton. Thank you. Um, yes, you, um, I understand what you're saying about the you know shallow sloping into the attenuation pond, but um, particularly the one on the the bottom right is quite close to um, a play area. So, following on from Councillor Harvey's um, comments, are you absolutely <coughs> confident that? I mean, I, I understand that if an adult got in there, I'm thinking, yeah. you know, if a small child was to wander off on their parents, you know, heaven forfend, you know they might be less able to get themselves out and as I say given the proximity to the play area. Yeah. Um, it's part, part, part and parcel of the reason why we, we asked for the um, for the matters of the boundary treatment to be reserved by condition so we can continue to to, to explore those points and if, if it's felt absolutely necessary we can we can explore that. Um, the general principle though is that it would be a very shallow grade so even a, a toddler should you know not get into too much trouble because it would be quite a while before they would get get too deep and you, you would certainly hope that they would be supervised yeah. and that their, okay. their parents would um would catch them before before they went too far it is it's very shallow shallowly graded and that has been checked over from a health and safety perspective from uh, you know from a health and safety consultant's perspective thank you are there any other questions councillor williams um thank you chair um, there's a comment in the um, uh, in the report that says um, it's about uh, a condition proposed to secure appropriate cycle parking provision to serve individual dwellings. It could be that it, I need to, to have asked that from Matt, but I'll ask you first. You may come back and add to that. So, um, c cycle parking would uh, for the uh, individual dwellings where they are homes. They are proposed on plot. Um, in uh, in relation to some of the apartments, um, the cycle parking um, it, it would be communal cycle parking, and so um, I mean there are there are details within the application, but the office have felt that they they require further details on that. Thank you. I'll ask a further clarification from Matt um, when we finish this part. That's all right, Chair. Councillor Gusain. Thank you, Chair. I'd just like to ask uh, if the design uh, of the dwellings provide for energy savings and sustainability? Um, the approach that's been adopted has been a fabric first approach, which has sought to specify a high quality of, 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 um, of passive design in terms of the uh, ventilation and uh, insulation of the properties, as well as their orientation to sort of maximise um, solar gain and, and shading, basically. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Mitchell. Thank you, Chair. Could you inform us what public transport connections there might be on site, or do you intend to use the existing framework exterior, external to the site? Um, the intention is uh, to use the existing framework. However, it has been future-proofed to allow a route to pass through the site in the future should the uh, service provider want to provide that extension. Before you go, I'd like you on. You're talking about planting a lot of trees on the site. Have you considered putting fruit trees on the site as part of? Um... 
do have the landscape is here if you don't <laughs> <laughs> defer to my colleagues if you want. Just a small detail, perhaps you can tell me afterwards. Okay, yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> if there are no other questions, thank you very much, Mr. Smith. We will now go into the debate on this one. Who wants to start off? It has to be Councillor Harvey, since he's in his. Uh, it is indeed in my patch. And um, first of all, I'd like to thank Alan Try and the uh, developers because they have made considerable efforts to engage with the community. Um, Pinho Village um, Action Group and other, uh, others, and um, a couple of um, uh, wider consultations. So, so I, I'd like to thank the developer for that um, for that piece of work. There are, however, a couple of other issues which have been brought up, mostly by my residents, um, um, some of which are clearly not re uh, not um, uh, uh, re relevant to today. Um, there is a great deal of disquiet about flat top buildings. There are no other flat top buildings in the vicinity. The Harrington New Estate has no flat top buildings, and this proposed development has some flat top buildings. Sorry, flat top buildings is a bit of a problem about flat top buildings. There are no others in the vicinity, and none in the new Harrington's estate, and people are concerned that it will look um, somewhat um, incongruous. Um, cycle parking. Um, I understand, I think, anyway, the Section 106 agreement has not yet been finally concluded and there are some difficulties because it mentions the Exhibition Way link road and these are matters for the Highway Authority to deal with, not for us, um, but I would like to see that as well as a co-cars establishment, we also have a co-bikes electric bike um, establishment part, part there. Um, and generally speaking, I'm a little bit wary about very nice, pretty plans which show very well planted and grown areas. And I would ask the developer to ensure that all the planting that has been described here, all the hedgerows are prepared and maintained. Um, I personally have walked the perimeter of this development and the I believe the previous owners have spent already some S106 money in providing a gravelled path and a improvement to the car park of the church, and I welcome that as well. So, generally speaking, um, parts of this development are fine. Um, the matters that I don't like have been decided, so I'm unable to um, uh, go into detail about those. Thank you. What have I done? Anybody else wish to speak on this item? Councillor Williams. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, this is a question for Matt, um, and it goes back to uh, my previous comment. It's on page 12 in the third paragraph where it, it um, says that there's going to be um, a condition is proposed to secure appropriate cycle parking provision to serve extra individual dwellings. And I can't actually see that in the conditions in, in, in the report. <coughs> I, I believe it's condition three, uh, which states that no individual dwelling approved shall be occupied until it has been provided with cycle parking storage facilities in accordance with details which have previously been approved. So while some information in terms of cycle parking has been provided as part of the application <coughs> because cycling as a sustainable mode of transport is, is um, policy consideration for all this council this condition effectively secures it and makes sure that it will be provided for each dwelling before they are occupied does nobody else wish to speak on this item um, then I will go to the vote. Um, this is recommended for re approval. Uh, with um, There are seven um, conditions listed, um, and we have to add an eighth one about boundary treatment, and we have to agree that this is without agreeing the drainage for the site. Um, can I have a proposer, please, for this one? Just to be clear before... Uh, councillor there there is it is subject to a section 106 agreement as well to secure a habitats mitigation contribution <laughs> is that not down as a condition at the moment that is in the additional information sheet Sorry. 
sorry, I must I haven't seen that one. Um, so, with the conditions that we've all been told about now, can I have a proposer for this one, please? Councillor Bialik, a seconder, please. Councillor Sutton, all those in favour, please show. Those against? One against. That one is carried. Thank you, members. We now go on to the next item, which is the land west of Ringswell Avenue. And I'm sure members are well aware of this one. Um, and there again, this is a reserve matters. Um, the inspectorate agreed this one originally in the end. Um, Matt, I believe this one is yours as well. Thank you, Chair. Uh, this application is for the construction of 60 dwellings with means of access, public home space and associated infrastructure uh, has been specified by uh, Live West. This slide shows the uh, site location um, with the boundary outlined in red. Um, it is a um, former uh, St Luke's school site, which I know some members are going to be familiar with because um, an application was previously refused on this site for, uh, I believe, 48 dwellings, which was subsequently approved at appeal. <coughs> This uh, slide shows the, the aerial view. It actually shows uh, the site when the uh, school buildings uh, were still there, but uh, as uh, uh, you may be aware, they have now been cleared from the site. Um, again, I think most members are familiar with its general location in the city. Obviously, we have Honiton Road down uh, here with uh, Ringswell Avenue, which is a, a cul-de-sac, residential cul-de-sac here. Ah, now this slide obviously does show uh, the, the site as it presently exists. <coughs> These are some photos um, of, the, of the site at the moment. And this is the, the site layout that is proposed now, the key difference between this uh, application and the previously um, uh, approved application at appeal is that it is now uh, showing two vehicular access points. So one vehicular access from Ringsall Avenue here, uh, and a second vehicular access from this road here. Now, to prevent this becoming a, a through route, uh, it has been uh, agreed with uh, Denver County Council Highways to provide um, a landscaping feature in the centre, which will effectively create two cul-de-sacs. Uh, now, this uh, application shows the uh, parking proposed as part of the scheme. Um, in addition to the parking provided for each residential unit, some additional on-street parking has been provided here uh, and here, which will help with uh, school drop-off. Uh, this uh, slide shows uh, one of the uh, street um, elevations, so a uh, fairly uh, traditional uh, design uh, with uh, a good uh, use of materials, uh, a fairly simple um, fenestration pattern. And this slide shows uh, another street elevation, and likewise here. Um, now the application, uh, sorry, the key, the key issue um, that was raised previously by members when they refused the, the application for 48 dwellings was concerns over uh, access in terms of safety and traffic generation 
um, at the junction with Ringswell Avenue and uh, Honiton Road. Now, whilst the application comprises 12 more dwellings than that previous uh, application, uh, clearly the number of dwellings that will be using uh, Ringswell Avenue for access is lower than the previous application that was refused and subsequently overturned at appeal, so it's clearly acceptable in terms of access uh, and obviously uh, access via this route is acceptable as well. Uh, consequently, members, the application is being brought before you with a recommendation for approval with a number of uh, conditions uh, and a section 106 agreement to secure uh, the policy compliant level of affordable housing um, provision of the open space with uh, provisions for maintenance uh, contribution to a footpath connection to warwick road which has been discussed and agreed with the highway authority um, as well as a uh, traffic regulation order to ensure that the, the speed limit within the scheme will not exceed 20 miles per hour, as well as an education contribution for £56,000 and a travel plan <coughs> contribution of £500 per dwelling. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Do any members have any questions of clarification? Councillor Henson. Madam Chair. Uh, as this is my area, and we've had a battle with the area in itself, not only this site. Um, the uh, builders we we met, and they agreed that to cut off the through road between um, uh, Russet and um, Ringswell was a, was a great thing. But what I am querying is the design of some of the houses are not as nice as they could be. But the other thing I'm querying is two things, which is you've just mentioned that the uh, through way to Warwick Road from this estate, there's no mention of extra lighting. And as I can see that there is 106 has not been concluded on this, that we might go back to highways or, or talk to the um, developers, that this should be lighted through a, an area which, if you're talking about people going from uh, one area to another and there's no lighting, this is quite unacceptable and won't be used. The whole idea, if you're putting a slip area or an extra road in, which does not exist now, um, is that it should be used uh, and on dark nights this is not good for women on their own or women or children on their own. The other thing Madam uh, Chair, I would like to also uh, um, query the parking spaces, the seven parking spaces which is nice to have but I've had to ask the officers where they were and where they are this is one of the controversial things that when we had the meeting with the builders, chairman, uh, the residents and ourselves as councillors was always a problem within Ringswell Avenue um, so to, have, have, to have extra parking What is your question? To have, I'm just getting there, Madam Chairman. Do let me get there. Um, was to get, have extra car parking spaces for the overload of the schools which is St Nicholas and the drop off and the residents have suffered for years and years and years over their driveway in Ringswell uh, Drive there um, as being blocked off so if indeed those parking spaces which we have there and showed as is side on and therefore visitors that I presume is visitors but what will happen if it's not clearly or clearly signpost that it is for visitors that the residents will take up permanent parking spaces and uh, for overload and I think that's the worry here and the, the difficulty in 
the splay of reversing the cars in and out, as we can see on the map, is on like a, a T or a Y, if you'd like to put it. And it only needs other school users to come up behind, and we've got a, a, a block altogether. All I'm asking is to relook at that uh, way and the way the seven spaces are being looked at clearly and that they are for visitors and the children from the school dropping off, dropping on uh, and so on because that's one of the major problems that anybody who's got schools living near there but this one's a dead end uh, Ringswell Avenue and it, it, it really does cause problems not only for the services uh, for fire services and ambulance services Thank you. Um, thank you, Councillor Henson. Um, Andy, do you want to respond to that one? Yeah, th thank you, Chair. Chair just as a suggestion, I think um, looking at the layout, there's limited scope for where the visitor spaces go, and I think the um, where they've been identified is absolutely fine. Um, completely understand Councillor Henson's point about the usability of those. Can I suggest that, that it's really a, a traffic management matter rather than a planning matter, that we feed it back to county colleagues to make it clear that the, that those spaces are reserved for visitors? We can we can do it through the, sorry through you chair we can do it through the I don't think we can do it through the planning um, approval should that end up as such this evening but it'd be something the county could deal with through their uh, adoption agreement but I, I can say it will be can I say it'll be covered one way or another and if there's any problem with that we can go go back to the chair and to yourselves as ward councillors. Yeah, I, th I think um, Councillor makes a, a valid point regarding lighting of, of the footway link. Um, obviously, we can add a condition for an external lighting scheme, which is a standard condition normally on, on most major applications we'll deal with. They'll obviously only deal with lighting within the red line boundary. So um, lighting of the footpath beyond would have to be, again, a matter that is dealt with by Devon County Council. Um, as being responsible for that link. Thank you, Councillor Henson. Now we have a supporter uh, for this application, uh, Mr. Alex Graves. If you would like to come to the table, please. You too have three minutes when you are comfortable. Good evening, Chair, members. I'm the planning consultant acting for Live West and speak in support of your officer's recommendation. Live West are a registered provider of affordable homes who operate across the South West. They manage over 36,000 homes with a strong commitment to Exeter. They provide a range of homes and reinvest profits to ensure they can, can continue building so many affordable homes. As Live West retain ownership of the affordable, they have a long-term commitment to their developments striving to provide quality homes that people are proud to live in. This brownfield site will deliver 60 homes, 21 of which are affordable, to help address significant need in Exeter. As many of you will recall, this site already benefits from permission for 48 dwellings, all of which were to be accessed from Ringswell Avenue. <coughs> Whilst permitted, this access arrangement caused local concern at the time of the previous application. Since this time, in response to these concerns, the applicant has worked tirelessly to secure a second point of access, which reduces the dependency on Ringswell Avenue. Related to this is the introduction of a central pedestrian cycle zone. It's important to note that as a result of this, there are no neighbour objections to the current application. This is rare for a scheme of this scale. A range of one to four bed homes are provided including a wheelchair accessible home designed through discussions with the council. The design incorporates high quality materials with key design features and Live West to be mindful to consider neighbours, the council's design guide and national space standards. Separation distances to existing neighbours are generally more than required by the design SPD. Landscaping and ecology have been incorporated with three high quality areas of public open space provided. Existing trees are retained where possible. The site is within an urban area where foot, cycle and public transport are all realistic choices. 
generous parking is provided and visitor spaces, which will be clearly demarcated, will ease congestion. The site will, in, will provide increased permeability for cycling and walking to the area, creating links to Honiton Road. The Highway Authority has no objection to the proposal. This high quality proposal will deliver significant benefits, including making best use of brownfield land, affordable homes, public open space for the wider community, and facilitating pedestrian and cycle links to Ripston Avenue and Warwick Road. On the latter, I should add that there will be lighting provided within the red line area of the site, and there is a financial contribution towards the Highway Authority to improve the connection on the other side of the site, which does um, include costing for lighting within that. Live West are proud to present these proposals to you, which they believe are worthy of your officer's recommendation for approval. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Graves. Are there any points of clarification? Councillor Gazane. Uh, you said that the, uh, the, the first permission was for 48 dwellings, but now I understand it's come up to 60. Is yes, that it right? Is. It is, so correct. So it's 60, not 60, 48. Yes. Right, okay. Uh, wouldn't that affect the. Um, I mean, when you go from 48 to 60, you must have sh shrink the dimensions of the older one, the, the design. To make them smaller they're, in order to go that much. How did you get? How did you get the, the extra one? There are less four bed units as part of the current application. There are a higher number on the on the forty eight unit scheme. Right. Okay, thank you, Councillor Mitchell. I'd like to follow up with Councillor Henson on the traffic management, because with the central reservation area, shall we call it, you effectively got two dead end sections of road. And I'm just wondering from a traffic management point of view, uh, does the width of the road and the spacing allow for people parking on the road, traffic visiting, and everybody who comes into the site and wants to leave it literally has to do a U has to do a turn to get out of the site. The um, the highway authority have been consulted and are happy that it works in engineering terms. Um, turning space have been incorporated in, tracking has been carried out to demonstrate the vehicles can and enter the site and leave in a, in a forward gear without causing any nuisance within the highway so they they are comfortable so with where that. would you see the two big turning circle areas being for people coming on either of the venues at the moment either of the access points at the moment sorry within that's effectively is a, a turning a turning head yeah and what about and where would be your turning head Centralised, demarcated, it was not quite centralised, just to the, um, the side of the centralised pedestrian zone where you have the, the paved area. It is designed effectively to turn your head dimensions. Okay. But all of that assumes that there's nobody's parking on the roadway at the time. There is quite generous parking properties, so there's plenty of off street parking, but also where there are bays within the street, they're designed outside of the carriageway. So, for example, the visitor bays, they're in bays parallel to the carriageway itself. So there shouldn't be anyone on the actual road. Or well, we we optimise the choices of people to not park on the road. That's what we, we can never control in behaviour. But, but all you can ever do is, is provide being so close to a school. A school you're a, you're a magnet. Uh, if you've got parking spaces at certain times of the but, day. But what we have done here, of course, the the 48 units approval was entirely off Ringswell Avenue next to the school. So by dropping the number to 29 coming off of Ringswell and providing seven visitor spaces and actually there will be lesser impact associated with this than the earlier approval. Councillor Henson. I like your comments on the, on the turning up there it's absolutely appalling um, when you've got all the car parking taken up on the right hand side going up on Ringswell there is none time you go up the other side there is no turning point. Would we, the, what I would like to get down to at the moment, that on your record we are asking for two electric points. Do you foresee them, uh, where do you see them on site, please? They are actually provided, and I'm not sure if, Matt, within your slides you have the um, parking schedule drawing, because they are actually shown on there. I can't point to it on that plan if I'm entirely honest, but they are they are provided for and they're shown on the plan and they're, they're on the shown the approved that up plan. The, are the, I would like to know exactly where because I, are you using the existing seven uh, seven car parking spaces as two electric points or are those separate? 
my understanding is they're separate, but I can. I think Andy's going to go and try yeah, and look at the key actually because it is on there. Councillor Branson, could you please stop talking? If it's additional, Madam Chairman, I'm quite satisfied. But if it's a part of, then I would be seriously concerned because the point was that the residents were promised uh, sufficient car parking, uh, and I wouldn't like the residents to be lied to uh, it's, it's, at this point when we are nearly there. Uh, and to be perfectly honest, I would I would be concerned that they are being looked at as. Um, as included, and I. Th this is what I want to get straight here. At this committee, just, um, well, just Miss Graves, I gather you've taken advice on that. I have. I can confirm, as as I thought and hoped was the case, the two additional spaces are not included in the seven visitor base. I take that. Um, so, if you wish to impose an additional condition regarding this matter, that might give sufficient I will, reassurance. I will ask the officers to look at that. It's already conditioned. Continuation of the structure of the PVC level and the dwelling provided in the zone here lies through with the scheme of provision of electric car charging. Points and development shall be submitted to improve and writing by the local planning authority. No, so, 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 effectively, the local planning authority will have control over where they are and can ensure that they don't. In addition, rather than exactly. Thank you very much. Can you turn on? If there are no other questions, we will open this debate. Councillor Sutton. Thank you, Chair. Um, I, I welcome the um, development of, of this plan because as, as people who've been on this um, committee for some while will know that the original application was um, was refused um, on the grounds of um, the access arrangements around um, Ringswell Avenue and the, the concerns relating to that. So. Um, Having one on appeal, I welcome the fact that the developers have, have clearly um, listened to our concerns and, and I, I feel have moved quite a long way in now having um, dual access and effectively um, the, the barrier in the middle of um, this, this development. Um, I, I also welcome the fact that um, this is uh, being provided by um, Live West. Uh, uh, those of you who read the Express and Echo will, will know that um, it, there is a constant comment um, below the line comments around um, there being insufficient housing um, provided for uh, residents um, of the city um, who uh, can't afford to buy on the open market. So um, the fact that there is um, affordable housing in here is, um, is to be welcomed. Um, I have some, well, I have, I do have a great deal of sympathy with Councillor Henson's um, points around parking for the school. Um, like, like many councillors, um, my ward also has um, a school at the end of um, a cul-de-sac and access to schools at pick up and drop off point um, is a perennial problem and, and as I've said more than once in this committee, um, you know, the head teacher of the <coughs> school in Exwick has said there are there's some parents who would drive their children into the classroom if they, they were able to. Um, it is going to be a problem and, and I, I do understand um, your concerns around there. I welcome the fact that there are visitors parking bays provided for that. However, um, I would um, counsel against too much optimism on them all always being available for people at school drop-off point because um, you know people are people and, and at times we're all selfish and, and I suspect that unless there is a parking warden standing there um, it will not be policed so there is always going to be a risk that those visitor parking bays are occupied by um, people who live in the site and not being used as visitor parking bays but um, all I can say is it's it's a good move on the the part of the developers and I hope that 
that will be respected. But as I say, I, I would counsel you against being too optimistic about that because um, I don't see how that can be um, enforced. Um, but by and large, I think this is um, there are positive developments on this. Um, it has gone off in number, as, as Councillor um, Gassain has, has, um, uh, has uh, discovered from her questions, but it actually offers more houses um, of a smaller nature, which again, I think um, will do a great deal, um, well, not a great deal, will, will help towards the provision of um, affordable housing in, in two and three bedroom units. So uh, I welcome this application. Thank you, Chair. Councillor Hanson. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, Councillor Sutton, you are a oh, little white, but the point is on this, this is not just a local school, this is a Catholic school and it is hugely used from Devon and outside Devon. So they, a lot of people just can't just walk to school, they just have to drive to school from wherever uh, they might live. But I thank the officers for explaining and uh, putting the fears because the lighting on into Warwick Avenue and Warwick Road is most important uh, to safety of my residents. And the other thing is, is the turning head. And uh, it, I, I think one of my colleagues did mention it is very narrow. It might be you can pass two cars at time, but when the cars are parked, you can't pass two cars. Uh, and the turning head is rather narrow. But my, my now next challenge is that the lorries coming out, and this is going on to the construction side, and it will have to be, very, be pleased extremely tight because the residents here are going to be for at least two years of building work going on in this particular, not with just this site, but the other uh, proposed uh, uh, site. And the fact that it's coming out onto Risbon Avenue and to Bramley Avenue, the one thing you're going to go into is the serious problem we have with Lower Hillbarton Road. Now that has become such a rat run now off, off of Hunnerton Road by which case if you put up the main uh, map Matt if you may please uh, to show the site as it's towed with Hunnerton Road if indeed they come out of Bramley Avenue and turn right and <coughs> down Lower, Lower Hill Road Lower Mill Avenue can I May I take the opportunity of coming up? Because I don't think any of you are aware. Can you hear me at the back? <laughs> You should turn left out of Ringswell, go up around the roundabout and come back onto Barton Road. What will happen is they will come back down Lower Hill Barton Road and out into Hunnerton Road that way because it means going further afield. And I think we, the County Council, seriously got to have a look at the entrance where the church is by the end of. Uh, Bramley Avenue and Lower Hill Barton Road because there's a little this here they you whipping around going there and around that way the, tr the, the what the, the trucks are going to do is going to come out and turn down what you well, that's the very thing you don't this is only concrete it's not cement it, it's it's cement and not proper tarmac and by which case the wear on this road is appalling so I seriously got to look at the, con, uh, the construction of how you enter this site and back on that site in a very high density, um, high density uh, of uh, building, uh, uh, housing. And that's, I'm seriously worried about that. Okay, okay. 
just to be clear, if members refer to the additional information sheet for, for the committee, the, the case officer has proposed uh, amending condition nine requiring a construction and an environmental management plan. And if members read that, they'll see that um, as a specific requirement of that, um, we do require details of site traffic and traffic routing. So clearly when that's submitted, we'll consult Devon County Council's highways uh, officers uh, and they'll also be concerned about where the construction traffic will be coming from and going to. And again, that's a matter that we can control as a local planning authority through this I condition. Know, I know you can. And can I have that written in, Madam Chairman? And I would like either one of the, or all of the three councillors involved there to be involved in it. To, perhaps we can see what the residents have told us what you can't. And that's all we ask is we don't want to interfere, but we would like to make sure that we, you know, have it, if, it, if that is uh, appropriate. Yeah, um, Councillor Henson, if you look at condition nine on the on the update sheet, it is. It does say that um, it, it, it says Ringswell Avenue will not be used. Explicitly, it's in there explicitly. So no, I think the condition is there. It's lower 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 Hill Barton Road. You're worried about. Uh, um, Andy, can we do something about that as well? Yeah, um, as Matt says, all the details of the uh, construction routes, etc., are effectively reserved by that condition, and we'd be more than happy to uh, consult ward members when we come to discharge that. Thank you very much. Right. Anybody else wish to speak on this item? No. Um, we will go to the vote if I can find my notes. We have got seven. Um, 17 conditions. Recommendation is for approval of subject to the 106 agreement and 17 conditions um, with condition 9 being changed to the one that's on the update sheet. Um, and did I hear right? Uh, we can condition uh, lighting of the footpath, Andy, or have I got that wrong? I think we discussed conditioning uh, an external lighting scheme within the site if members. Uh, feel that is a necessary uh, issue that you would like to be conditioned. I, I would think that you know lighting of a footpath is essential in this day and age, and I hope members agree with me. Yes, Councillor Morse. You've got no speakers. Just so I can understand, because I think the officers are saying we can't do what you think we can do, which is we can condition it within the red yeah. line, but the footpath that the councillor was talking about we can't condition, we can't make them put up lighting in that area. So I think it's probably, we need a level of clarity on that because it, at the moment it's making it sound like we can do what the councillors ask for and we can't. So I just, I'd just like that made clear. I'm happy to vote for it that way because I realise we can't do it, but I don't want anyone misunderstanding what they're voting for. I mean, I think what I meant was that we can, we can ask for a condition for lighting on the footpath within the site, but we, on the grounds of safety, we can't do anything outside of that. Is that correct, Andy? Through you, Chair, that, that's correct. But I, I do recall the Speaker uh, confirming that there were um, funds and agreements set aside to work with the county to deliver the lighting uh, on the off-site portion as well. Right, so do we need a condition on that or not? Uh, no, because it's outside the uh, the application site and outside the application, uh, the applicant's control, I think that would be unreasonable to, con to condition it. But I think um, members should feel satisfied that the, the county have already identified that as a, a necessary infrastructure improvement. Thank you, Andy. Can I have a proposer then, please, for this one? Councillor Henson and the seconder, Councillor Branston. All those in favour, please show. Thank you, that one is passed. We now go on to the land at 2A New Court Road Topsham. And can I suggest members, one of the speakers is not able to be here tonight and he has sent a written uh, response. So I suggest that before we start this item that we all take a couple of minutes to read what he has written. Thank you.
Right, members, I hope you've had time to read this one. Um, Andy, you're presenting this one, are you? To a Newport Road option? I am. Thank you, Chair. Uh, this application is for a, a two bedroom single story dwelling uh, on Newport Road in Topsham. So, just orientating you there on the, uh, the, the site plan, you can see that the, uh, the site relates to an area of Greenland. I'll show you some photographs at the minute. It was formerly uh, the garden, I understand, of the dwelling immediately to the north, number 2A, uh, New Court Road. And as I said, the application is for a, a single dwelling within that plot. Uh, very relevant to your consideration of the matters uh, is the planning history of the site. Indeed, there have been uh, four previous applications um, on the site, uh, and also to at least two of which went to, went to appeal. Um, and one very recently, actually the, uh, the back end of last year. So I think the comments of the appeal inspector are very relevant to, as I say, your consideration this evening. Uh, in essence, the, uh, in dismissing the uh, that most recent appeal, the uh, inspector uh, agreed with ourselves as planning officers as that particular scheme was unacceptable for uh, three main reasons. Firstly, it was felt that the design was entirely inappropriate. It was a, it was a very um, uh, contemporary style flat roof design, uh, which the inspector felt jarred with the traditional character of the local area, uh, which was also the officer view. Um, secondly, there were some uh, overlooking uh, implications in terms of the, the neighbor to the north. And thirdly, there was, a, well, and indeed, besides the overlooking, there was also the the fact that the new dwelling somewhat obscured uh, the view of number 2A New Court Road, which actually orientates southwards. You'll see that in a, uh, in a slide in, the moment, in, in, a, in a moment, and it's very much a kind of focal point in the area. So the inspector was concerned about the, the impact on that view and also the impact of the amenity uh, of those people in terms of overlooking. And thirdly, the, uh, the concern was around the, the quantum of amenity space uh, provided for the new dwelling, which was all at the, the front of the site, um, fronting the highway, and thus was not private. So what the inspector did say, however, was that he felt, and this was in, indeed the view of a previous inspector, was he felt that um, uh, the use of the site for a dwelling uh, in principle was not unacceptable. It just needed to sit in its uh, in its context more sympathetically, both in design terms uh, and perhaps uh, further back in the site. And uh, it's to, to these ends that the applicant has sought to uh, design a scheme which addresses those issues. And as I talk you through the presentation, um, and in effect jumping to the, the conclusion here, our view as officers is that the applicant has, uh, has suitably addressed those issues. But if I could just take you through the, the slides of the site, um, there's the overhead there, so a little green area, but not protected landscape setting. So it's what we call a white land in the development plan, whereby you must look at, look at each application within its merits. Um, that's uh, it's accessed by a five guard gate at the moment, and that's the uh, uh, that, that's its current nature. Uh, it's effectively uh, bounded by the, the the green hedge on the right, uh, just beyond the the, the white walled. Uh, low slung out building there and you can see beyond that just the, uh, the the rigid gable of number 2a Newcourt Road which as I say uh, faces down the down the road there just as it kind of kinks to the left uh, that's looking in the opposite direction so the site is is in there behind the uh, the, the five bar gate uh, that's the, the the layout plan uh, and you see it's a modestly uh, designed bungalow. And actually, if I can stand up and point out a couple of uh, a couple of the relevant issues. I think the first thing to say is the inspector, we were very keen to ensure you had a good view of the front 
elevation of 2A. So this is effectively the view from further down the road as delineated by the, um, by the purple lines here. And what we've said to the applicant is your dwelling needs to sit um, further back from that to preserve that view. And you can see it's, it's tight there, but it does sit back. Uh, the other main amendment from the previous scheme, aside from the design, is that of the, the amenity space. Previously, the dwelling was set back largely, um, but all the amenity space was, was at the site frontage uh, and visible uh, from the road. There was also a bit of amenity space, I think, there, but that was, again, very overlooked by number 2A. What the applicant has done now is created a modest area of amenity space in the uh, southwest corner there, southeast corner rather, and also a secondary area of amenity space, um, which is to the front of the building. Uh, but as I say, if you look at the two together, it does uh, does meet our, our minimum standards. Sorry, just one other thing to say, in terms of the, the relationship with surrounds here, this is a garden area, which is leased to one of the uh, local buildings but is, isn't actually attached to their curtilage I believe and you've got the railway line just beyond. Got two different plans there which is a slight surprise to me because I'm sure there was one when I looked at the, uh, the, the presentation earlier. Um, Sorry, please bear with me. I'm just trying to work out what the difference is there. Sorry. Do you know what they're doing? I shall, uh, I shall check the... the uh, once I've finished speaking, we'll listen to the speaker, I will double check which is the plan you are considering this evening. I don't quite follow why there's two plans there. Um, that's the elevational uh, uh, and plan details of the dwelling. It's, um, it's what you would call a very modest, quiet design. Uh, it's, it's one which is uh, in keeping in relative terms with the surrounds in that it's a traditional pitched roof dwelling. Um, I don't think it's going to win any design awards if, I, if I'm honest with you. Um, but I don't think it's unacceptable uh, in that location. There's a, um, a mock-up there. Of, of how it might look. Okay, so I'm still trying to work out what the difference is between those two, but I'm going to talk to that plan uh, if I may. So, I so say I think the key issues in terms of the uh, the setting of number two A, uh, the uh, setting of number two A has been addressed. I think the design concerns we had previously with the very contemporary design have been addressed. Uh, I think it, there remains an issue of the amenity space there. Um, one could argue that the amenity space to the frontages shouldn't be able to count towards the overall quantum because it's not entirely private. Um, but our policy approach does allow some flexibility in terms of the private amenity space and allows a substandard approach in quantum terms if it's south facing. Now that, that is largely south facing and very private there so I think allowing for that and the, uh, the land at the frontage that would, uh, I think we'd find it very difficult to refuse consent on those particular grounds. Uh, you will note from the report that the application has been subject to a couple of uh, design iterations here. So we've had two sets of public consultation and the outcome of those is, is reported on the third page of your report there. Um, slightly fewer objections to the, to the revised scheme. I mean, I think in, in, in conclusion, Chair, um, the, plan, the most recent planning appeal makes it very clear that there is uh, scope to accommodate a suitably sized uh, dwelling there, by which I mean a modest sized dwelling. Uh, the inspector previously pointed out that uh, uh, infill type housing such as this does make an important contribution towards housing supply and one must bear that in mind given, given the fact that we can't demonstrate a five year supply. Um, I think the, uh, some of the other issues addressed by the uh, applicants relate to uh, problems with the construction of another house across the road, but that's not something you can consider when you uh, look at this application. You must look at it on its merits, and uh, the officer's recommendation is to approve subject to the uh, two pages of, of conditions at the end of the report. Thank you, Chair.
Are there any points of clarification? Councillor Mitchell. Point of information. Looking at the picture you showed of the completed dwelling, I'm just concerned about the pitch of the roof. It seems to be a high pitch roof. Are we in, in danger there of getting a dormer development? I mean, a, de a dormer development would would require um, a further grant planning consent. So I think you would have to look at that on its merits if it comes to you. Councillor Gazain. Um, Thank you, Chair. Just during the construction, uh, how much uh, disturbance is going to be to the neighbours? Because it is a very narrow street, it seems to me. Uh, it, I mean, that, that's a, a very relevant point. We have um, suggested, uh, well, we have a, a attached a condition requiring a construction employment management plan. Sorry, con construction uh, uh, management plan, environmental management plan, so we can control the time of deliveries and the access, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So we will be able to, to control that in the same way as we were discussing on the previous application at Ringswell Avenue. Councillor Henson. Hi there. Um, just uh, one or two concerns and um, my colleague there just sort of uh, got them across actually. Um, where that property is, it's on the bend, it's quite narrow, there is no footpath and if there are restrictions, that, um, that is used by school children to walk to school and so any restrictions need to take that into account. Um, I would suggest that no building on site before nine o'clock in the morning for example when children are travelling to school. Through you, Chair, if I may, the, the current suggested um, hours of construction are from 8 a.m. in the morning, uh, which is our standard approach. Um, if I'm absolutely honest, I don't know about how well or otherwise this is used as a, as a route for school children, so I don't feel best to advise on whether it's reasonable to, um, or unreasonable rather, to extend that to, not to, to start at 9 o'clock. So, I'll leave that for members to decide, but we can amend the condition if, if that's the wish of committee. Councillor Henson. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I was going to ask the size of the amenity that we've actually got, bearing in mind if there is a strip that is, not, that is appearing uh, to be left at the back, it's, the amenity doesn't look like per square footage. What have we got left? per square meter, I mean. Sorry, so the amenity space, which is the uh, the cross-hatched area in the southeast corner, that is 23 square meters. So that's the um, the, the relatively sunny uh, portion, if you like. And the uh, section to the front, which is just behind the, uh, the wall to the highway, I think is another, um, it's another, I can't quite find the figure, 30 something. It comes to 65 metres in total. We'd normally look for a rule of thumb for 55 square metres for, for a dwelling of this size. If there are no other questions of clarification, I have an objection to this um, application. If Mr David Williams would like to come to the table, please. And uh, Mr. Williams, you have three minutes like the previous speakers when you're comfortable. Right, thank you. Thank you. Press the um, right hand button. Well, there we are. Right, good evening, Chair, Councillors. My name is David Williams. I'm speaking on behalf of the residents of Newcourt Road, objecting to the application. There have been several previous applications for this site, all refused on valid grounds. And we wonder why now you would reconsider on a minor adjustment after consistent refusals over the past 19 years. The amenity space, as per page 68 of the officer's report, which in total is 59 square metres, as per the report, is compliant with the Exeter local plan policy in terms of the overall size but cannot be regarded as being of good quality. 
the patio area to the rear of the proposed dwelling is heavily shaded to the south by large trees on the neighbouring property and thus does not meet policy DG4 allowance that smaller houses may have reduced amenity areas if they are sunny south facing gardens. The trees clearly prohibit the sun getting through in the summer months. Your officer's report states the rear garden is below the minimum requirement for private amenity space and the location adjustment in this latest application does not increase the space available or enhance its usability. And the photograph that we've submitted shows com block is completely overlooked by 2A, the existing dwelling, as it was formerly the front garden of that dwelling, as you stated before. Your officer's report of June last year states the front elevation of 2A is designed to dominate the view northwards along Newcourt Road. The architect's revised proposed site plan shows the view lines marked on the plan, shows the view line bisecting the west roadside garden wall, and we've replicated this on a satellite image which we've submitted with a dotted line, which shows projecting this line does not follow the road down the hill but into the opposite hedgerow. We've shown with a solid line, the actual blue line needs to bisect the southern boundary at the corner of the outbuilding of number two, the property below the proposed dwelling. And um, we've shown this on a blue dotted line on the plan that we've submitted. If you take the correct view line to the architect's drawing, it goes through the proposed new dwelling, thus restricting the view of 2A from the bottom of Newcourt Road. The latest application by moving to a pitched roof from the previous flat roof design will only exacerbate the impact of the aforementioned view. And in conclusion, this site is simply too small to provide quality living space in keeping with the other properties in the immediate vicinity in Newcourt Road. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Has anybody got any questions to Mr. Williams? Thank you, Mr. Williams. Thank you. Um, uh, the Mr. Carr, who is a supporter of, of this application, is unable to be with us this evening. And I know you all had a chance to read it, but I have been advised because of live streaming that I should read um, his um, submission. Three minutes. Three minutes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, members. In 2006, this piece of land was sold off by the then owners of number 2A Newcourt Road as a potential development land upon which they attached covenants to ensure that the building was no closer than agreed and no higher than six metres to the ridge, both of which our design abides by. So when it was sold by the then neighbours, the expectation was that the dwelling, uh, dwelling would be, at some time, would be built there. The appeal officer's report states stated that the introduction of a modest-sized bungalow within this location is potentially acceptable. Infill development represents an important contribution to the housing supply. A modest-sized bungalow is exactly what we have now produced. Having spent considerable time discussing with the planning officer, we have produced a design which is now supported by the planning department. The two main concerns they had were design and outside amenity space. <coughs> the original modern flat roof design has been replaced by a more traditional design with pitch roof and local materials of natural slate, render and brickwork. After configuring the internal space, we have managed to create a private outside amenity space to the rear of the building to comply with the planning department's requirements. The access is by a five bar gate, which is existing and affords good visibility up and down Newcourt Road, which has a 20 mile an hour restriction on it. According to the online national accident collision map, I can find no record of any accident ever lodged in Newcourt Road. Our application has parking for two cars on site, turning, plenty of space for builders' vehicles to get off the road while construction is on, ongoing. And Devon highways have raised no concern. As has been mentioned by some that the plot is too small. However, reaching planning approval for a new house directly opposite occupies a site area of 245 square metres, as stated on their application number 1543 
Our site is, light, late, is larger at 270 square metres. The siting of the dwelling has been determined by previous comments from the planners, requiring the front of elevation of number 2A as seen when coming up New Court Road to be preserved. With this in mind, the proposal is located so that it is to maintain this view of 2A, but more importantly, to prevent overlooking towards it. This simple piece of flat infill land is an ideal site for a small development which will provide a useful home for a single person or a couple. <coughs> it will improve what will otherwise become an untidy piece of wasteland in a built up area. There are a number of positive planning criteria that are relevant here. And I will I only had about three lines to read. So members, we will open the debate on this one. No, you can't ask me questions, Councillor Sheldon. Councillor Sparks. Um, there was a comment there about the land being wasteland. My understanding is it was previously an orchard and has recently been cleared. And you can see from the pictures that it's not wasteland as such. It's Does anyone else wish to speak to this one? I, Councillor Henson. I was going to say that um, the amount of amenity space on this piece of land seems a very small piece. I hear what the officers say, and I, I'm a bit worried about the fact that there is just this piece of land. Um, when we're going to put a three-bed house on it, two bed, uh, two bed. Well, it doesn't matter. That <laughs> that still could be for four people. Um, I, it, it's right on a railway line, which is I lived for years on St David's Hill, while we on one. So that's nothing to prevent. But the to squeeze a, a house on that is a bit tight, and I'm just. I'm just uh, uh, just concerned about it. Councillor Sutton. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Chair. Um, I, I, I think we're overthinking this one. Um, we're, I think some people are overthinking this one. Um, we've heard what the officer has said. Um, I think in answer to um, Mr Williams's comment about um, why is this one being um, recommended for approval, whereas previous ones haven't, I think that's clear from the quote from the... Uh, planning inspector on the last one that um, the plot size is um, suitable for um, a, a smaller dwelling and this is a small two-bedroom bungalow. Um, I think if, if people think that it's the amenity space is um, too small then they shouldn't put in an offer for it um, should it be approved and, and built. It, it's, it does come down to um, everybody's um, needs and desires for housing is different and um, there are plenty of people who, uh, who want a, a small modest um, house or bungalow who don't necessarily are necessarily keen on gardening and may well welcome the fact that it's quite small but as I say I, I think if, if people don't think it would be right for them they shouldn't try to buy something like that so, anyone else wish to speak on this one now the recommendation is to approve with um, several conditions and informatives um, can I have um, a proposal, please, that we approve this one? Councillor Sutton and a seconder. Councillor Bialik. All those in favour, please show. Nine. Those against? Three Any abstentions? That one is carried then. Thank you, members. Um, our final item on tonight's agenda is Hamlin Gardens, and Andy, you are doing this one as well, I think. I am. Uh, thank you, Chair. This is entirely a procedural matter, members. Um, you will recall uh, considering an application in February of last year concerning the uh, the redevelopment of uh, the car park land between 106 Hamlin Gardens and 65 Carlisle Gardens. That application um, was submitted by the City Council. Uh, it was, your recommendation was to approve subject to a legal agreement. 
Our most recent legal advice is um, we cannot enter into a legal agreement with ourselves. So the most appropriate way would be uh, would be to do it via a planning condition. And uh, the purpose of this report is just to ask you to amend your previous resolution so that the uh, elements of the legal agreement are tied up in a planning condition as opposed to a legal agreement. Thank you, Chair. I have to take questions. Does anybody wish to question Angie on this one? Right, so I need a proposer and a seconder for this one. Councillor Morse, Councillor Guzain, all those in favour, please show. Thank you. Any objections? Any against? Thank you, members. Um, as agreed last week, the site inspection party is councillors Mitchell, Morse and Williams. <laughs> Sounds like an estate agent, doesn't it? And the date of our next meeting is Monday the 10th of February here at 5.30pm. Thank you, members.